Now to learn a little bit more about microalgae, we have Professor Francisco Romero from the University of Seville, and the presentation is on microalgae as a stimulating avenue. Francisco, please. Hello, good morning. First, I'd like to thank the organizers for inviting me, as I am purely an academic. I'm Fran Romero Campero. I'm a professor in the Department of Computer Science and Artificial Intelligence and a researcher at the Institute of Plant Biochemistry and Photosynthesis, which is a joint center between the University of Seville and the CSIC. This should count as part of my introduction. Today I'm going to talk about one of the results we have obtained within the Microclima project, which was previously introduced by Manuel from Alga Energy, and focuses on improving crop resistance to drought using microalgae extracts. We've conducted the project in wheat and tomato using transcriptomic analysis. During most of my presentation, I'll be talking about these three plants, wheat, tomato, and the model plant, Arabidopsis thaliana. However, I would like to draw your attention and make us aware that the plant kingdom, or green lineage, exhibits a wide morphological and physiological diversity, ranging from crops essential to human cultivation, like wheat or corn, with vascular systems and different organs and tissues, to non-vascular plants, like liverworts or mosses, and even filamentous microorganisms, like plexor medium, or unicellular ones, like Triococcus. Despite their diversity, all these organisms share the ability to perform photosynthesis. They have organelles called chloroplasts, capable of harnessing solar energy and channeling it to break down water molecules. This photolysis, on the one hand, releases oxygen, which is the basis of Earth's oxygenation and enables the life of other organisms on the planet. On the other hand, the release of photons generate a potential difference in an electron transport chain that uses this reducing power, this energy, to fix CO2 into glucose, forming the basis of all food chains on Earth. This also makes these organisms particularly attractive for sustainable applications, since their development and the production of biotechnologically interesting compounds are linked to CO2 fixation and the mitigation of atmospheric CO2 accumulation, which contributes to the climate change we are beginning to experience. Traditionally, the plant kingdom has been divided into two very distinct groups, or so it was believed. On the one hand, there were plants, and on the other hand, there were microalgae. However, with the recent development of omnics techniques, initially genomics, it has allowed us to generate the genomes of all the plant species and compare them, revealing that what we thought was very different was not so much. While there are indeed groups of microalgae, cryptophytes, rhodophytes, and glaucophytes, which are different from plants. But we have evidence that my group has generated based on phylogenomic trees that embryophytes were involved in a single event in evolution that generated the group known as Viridi plantae, literally meaning real plants. In this group, of course, there are embryophyte plants, but there are also two groups of microalgae, chlorophytes and streptophytes. These algae share, as they are evolutionarily related to plants, molecular systems with them that go beyond photosynthesis including all molecular processes related to phytohormones, responses to biotic and abiotic stresses, and even developmental molecular systems are shared by these two groups of microalgae and terrestrial plants, where the crops that are of interest to us belong. Therefore, it is not surprising to see that microalgae extracts have a biostimulating power when applied to plants. However, the molecular mechanisms underlying this biostimulating power of microalgae were unknown. And this is the starting point of the microclimate project mentioned by Manuel earlier. This project is an operational group in the public-private collaboration, where various institutions had specific roles. Specifically, Alga Energy generated two microalgae-based biostimulants on an industrial scale, LRM and Bio2. A Saha conducted field trials to validate and test the biostimulating effects of these two products. Sabas 
as mentioned earlier by Manuel, analyze the effects of root application or edaphic application of these biostimulants on soil quality, and we, along with IMIDRA and the IBVF, were responsible for phenological analysis of how plants develop after being treated with microalgae extracts. In particular, what I did was apply omnix techniques, transcriptomics of gene expression, to plants treated with biostimulants subjected to drought. We also had BioVegan, which was responsible for dissemination, and created this website that I encourage you to visit for more information. Within our tasks, in microclimate, we were divided into two different blocks. One block was the characterization of one of the biostimulants that was already commercialized, which was LRM, and how it acted on wheat and tomato plants. The other block was more exploratory, because we aimed to apply our transcriptomic techniques to guide the development of new biostimulants. On the one hand, Biostimulant 2 focused on a different fraction of microalgae cultivation and different ways to process and stabilize these biostimulants. Starting with wheat, without going into detail, the experimental design involved having plants subjected to drought and plants under complete irrigation, combined with foliar treatment by spraying the biostimulant. We extracted RNA, sent it for sequencing, we used RNA sequenciation, and using high-performance computational techniques, we were able to estimate the expression levels, in this case, in plants subjected to drought compared to untreated ones. Each point here represents a gene, and its position in the square represents if it is unaffected, it appears on the main diagonal. If it's activated, it appears in red in the upper triangle. And if it is repressed, it appears in the lower triangle. So what we observed was that the foliar application of LRM had a substantial and significant effect on gene expression in wheat activating and repressing nearly a thousand genes. Then we applied artificial intelligence techniques to represent the available information about these genes at the level of gene ontology. And we found that these genes were not randomly distributed in the plant's functions, but were primarily focused on the responses to water deprivation. In other words, plants treated with a biostimulant exhibit a stronger response to water shortage than untreated plants even though both were subjected to drought conditions. We also observed other processes involved in development, such as accelerated plant development, which was a positive outcome. Additionally, we found positive changes in plant metabolism, particularly the assimilation of phosphate. Here are some example genes to illustrate that gene upregulation is not pure or small, but changes in gene expression levels are of various proportions. The specific genes we found were regulating response to water deprivation in wheat were regulated to stomata closure, meaning that the treated plants close their stomata more than the untreated plants. This, at the transcriptomic level, is quite distant from the phenotypic level. So, in addition to conducting this analysis, we validated it by monitoring how the plants developed. These are plants subjected to drought. On the left, you have the plant treated with water spray, meaning the untreated plant. And on the right, the plant treated with microalgae extract, LRM. From the early stages of plant development, in the tillering phase, we observed that the plants treated with LRM had more tillers. In the booting phase, we saw an acceleration in plant development with a larger plant structure. However, at this point, as is normal in drought response, the tillers were sacrificed, and both the treated and untreated plants only developed a single shoot. However, the plant structure was larger, and the size of the spikes was also larger. What we observed in drought-affected plants was also evident in plants not subjected to stress. In this case, these plants that were irrigated with full substrate retention capacity, even in the tillering phase, you can see that the plant, although not subjected to drought, had a greater number of tillers. In the booting phase, there was also an acceleration, and this was particularly evident in the filling phase. During grain filling, 
the treated plant had a greater number of tillers and more spikes, and so on. We validated this by collecting spikes, and we found that in the case of drought, although both situations were quite stressed, in the part treated with LRM, the spikes were larger. And when we weighed them, we saw a spectacular increase of more than threefold in grain yield. These results were not as dramatic in the field, but as Saha obtained similar results, you can consult with them if you want. What we observed in drought-affected plants, we also saw in plants not subjected to stress. Here, of course, the production is much higher in both cases, but we also observed an increase in production in plants treated with the microalgae-based stimulant. So, we wanted to see if this biostimulant had this effect only in one crop or if it had a broader effect on different plant species. Tomato is quite different from wheat, so it was the next one we tested. Similarly, we conducted our transcriptomic study, applied the LRM, again in plants subjected to drought, and again, we saw that there was differential expression of thousands of genes. These genes were not randomly distributed among plant processes, but were mainly focused on responses to heat and developmental processes. In this case, the activated genes were slightly different from those seen in wheat. But that's because these are different plants with different strategies to cope with drought. While wheat closes stomata, tomato induces genes involved in wax synthesis on the cuticle to prevent water loss and accelerate flowering. Again, to see what we observed at the molecular level, transcriptomic level, applied also to the phenotypic level, we conducted a monitoring of the plants. Here we see that the plant treated with LRM has a larger structure and exhibits lower stress levels. This was also visible in plants not subjected to drought. Here I want to show a video, because in the case of tomato, we did not follow the plants until they bore fruit, but instead, we use ubiquitous computing based on Raspberry Pi and attached a Noir camera to see how the plant responded after a prolonged period of absolute drought, followed by watering. On the left, you have the plant treated with LRM, and on the right, the one that was only sprayed with water. So we saw that it had a greater capacity for recovery after continuous drought stress. The second block was assisting the company in developing new biostimulants, or new ways to generate stability for the biostimulants we were working with. To facilitate the work, as we started with a new biostimulant, we used the model plant Arabidopsis. Again, the same foliar treatment, tissue collection, RNA extraction, and sequencing. We observed that this new biostimulant, which utilized a different fraction of microalgae, also had a property that increased gene expression levels. These gene expression levels were not random across the plant's genome, but focused on response to stimuli, such as responses to biotic and abiotic stresses. We compared the genes activated by each of the biostimulants to see if they really had the same function or not. We found that while they shared some differentially expressed genes, each had a different mode of action. So it was indeed something new, a new product. Lastly, as a new product was being developed, we needed to explore different ways to stabilize it. Conservation methods, shelf life, etc. Alga Energy provided us with numerous biostimulants identified by codes. And in the lab, using our cultivation system, we explored the use of four microalgae. Microalgae 1, 2, 3, and 4. To see if they really had biostimulating power or not. By applying clustering and classification techniques, we compared the treatment of these different biostimulants, stabilized, etc., with treatments performed simply by spraying water.
Using artificial intelligence techniques, we were able to identify three different groups. Firstly, some products were grouped with water treatments, meaning that these products did not really have biostimulating properties and only activated a very small number of genes. Secondly, we identified another set of biostimulants that had been generated using different enzymatic processes, different parameters, and here, two of the new microalgae we had used in the lab also appeared, and these new products had a low to medium effect on the number of genes they altered. Lastly, we did find production and stabilization processes and a new microalgae that was quite promising and had a massive effect on gene expression in plants. All of this was done again in Arabidopsis thaliana, due to the ease of working with it in the lab. The next steps would be to extrapolate it to crops like wheat and tomato. In conclusion, one of the messages I want you to take home is that there is enormous diversity in the plant kingdom. And within that vast diversity in the plant kingdom, there are two groups of microalgae, chlorophytes and streptophytes, which I encourage you not to forget, as they are very similar to plants. They share a large number of molecular systems, therefore, their extracts are strong candidates to serve as biostimulants. We have studied two biostimulants in detail, LRM and BIO2. LRM has a drought resistance effect on wheat and tomato crops, but with a slightly different impact. While in wheat, it induces stomatal closure, in tomato, it induces wax synthesis and accelerates flowering. We have seen that the new biostimulant, BIO2, which comes from a different fraction of microalgae cultivation, has a biostimulating power different from that of LRM. And we have also established a protocol to evaluate and classify new biostimulants according to a low, medium, or high level of action. Of course, I must acknowledge that I did not do this alone, but with the entire group I belonged to, especially Mercedes Garcia Gonzalez, Elena Garcia Gonzalez, and Anna Belen and Cristina, who are the two PhD students. I also want to acknowledge the funding entities, as Microclimate is a project funded by the Ministry of Agriculture, Fisheries and Food. I'm at your disposal if you have any questions.